Nitin Jain, head retail capital markets at Ilwise Financial Services, joins in on the show to run us through what his fundamental views are on the markets. Great having you with us on the show, Nitin. Given that it's clearly been uh, overall the political uh, election outcome that has been dominating the direction of the markets off late, do you think all of that positivity has already been factored in now? The all of it has got uh, factored in. My suspicion is there is still, uh, if the results are positive, I think there is still 10 to 15 percent to go even from these levels, especially if uh, you see a sign of a very, very clear majority. Uh, having said that, I think uh, it's very unlikely that before the election results are out, you might see more than 2, 3, 4 percent upside from here. Markets might tend to stay between 65 to 68 because anything below 65 gives you a great uh, trading opportunity from elections point of view and anything above 68 will make it a little tricky for you to get in. Nitin, in the event that there is this uh, clear majority, where in the large cap space would you advise adding or creating fresh positions, trading positions? See, I think the biggest beneficiary of uh, a positive outcome from elections point of view would be the capital goods and the infrastructure space. And I think uh, if, if that is the call that a person is making, then I think that's the, that's the place to be. Another beneficiary can actually be the public sector stocks, uh, some of the public sector banks, ONGCs of the world, uh, even IOCBP. So I think uh, if you look at, there was this ETF that came out recently, Goldman Sachs uh, Public Sector Fund. It's trading at around 19, 19 half or something like that. Even that might be a very good bet from an elections outcome point of view. If your view is that, um, you know, uh, there will be clear majority at the end of it. For a slightly active investor, Nitin, who doesn't want to invest in this ETF but wants to buy PSUs, would you stick to PSU banks and OMCs? Or would you go down a level lower and look at some of the uh, slightly smaller PSU names which really haven't done? I mean, there is an RCF for the fertilizer names which haven't gone up at all. Or, you know, a, a clutch of these uh, railway stocks, for example, a, a slew of these names. Would you look at them or just stick to these two large pockets? See, I think the next day, uh, once the results are out, the entire pack will go up. But then you have to be clear about the long-term opportunity and that's where I think the names that I discussed in the beginning, maybe you can add uh, Engineers India Limited there. Uh, so those are the names which I think will do well over a period of time rather than just one big uptick the next couple of days and then you know uh, consolidating at those levels. So from a portfolio point of view, if you're investing, then you should stick to those kind of large names. Nitin, let's talk about the defensive basket and very divergent in terms of moves. FMCG has remained muted, Pharma has been on a tear. How would you approach these two spaces? No, actually, it's become very tricky. The FMCG space is actually again now a bet on the election's outcome. So what has happened is over the last couple of years, uh, most of the people have become overweight consumption, uh, FMCG in particular. And uh, now suddenly there is this optimism about economy being revived and beta stocks are doing extremely well. So fund managers are under tremendous pressure to lighten up on the defensives and to load up on, um, uh, on the cyclicals. And if, if uh, the results are uh, positive as we've been discussing, then I think this pressure would uh, mount even further. And in the short term, I do think there will be significant pressure on FMCG and pharma. Uh, for, for a month or so. After that, I do think that some of the good quality stocks would, uh, would recover and they will do extremely well. For example, stocks like Asian Pain, stocks like uh, Pidilite, uh, even in Pharma, some of the names like Lupin and all, I think they would continue to do well. But there would be some pressure immediately after the election uh, results are out because of uh, the pressure on the fund managers to sell and participate in the cyclicals. Then I normally would ask you for a long-term investment idea, but it's just so active these days. I want to ask you if you were to bet on one top name for the next one month, keeping in mind with the hypothesis that the election outcome will be favorable. One top idea. Normally, I, I mean, we are not very good at predicting one, one month and two month kind of uh, horizon. But if you put a gun on my head and ask me, uh, 
Then I would say LNT probably. I think LNT would be the safest and, and a reasonably attractive bet even at these levels. It's only 16, 17 times next year earnings. And I think it will be the biggest beneficiary of, uh, of the push in the infrastructure space. Uh, so I, w I would pick LNT probably. Yeah, I mean, we almost did that, Nitin, put a gun to your head. And thanks so much for coming up with that answer as well. On another opportunity, hope probably after the elections, we'll get in more long-term ideas from you. Thanks so much for joining in on this leg and giving us your views. Prakash, thanks so sure. much for joining in on this leg of Market Sense as well. With that, it's a wrap from Awan and myself and the team that put the show together. Thanks so much for watching.